Hi and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about the frequency of monitoring visits. More after the break. The first monitoring visit should be carried out as soon as possible after the first patient is enrolled in the study. This allows problems to be identified at an early stage, thus reducing subsequent errors. If the first monitoring visit takes place too late, the processing of errors along with possible subsequent errors and the documentation of corrective and preventive actions often requires much more work than if one had visited the site in a timely manner for monitoring. Once the study has been running for some time, the site is usually visited at a more or less fixed monitoring frequency. A monitoring plan should be written for each study. The frequency depends on the nature, complexity, and risk of the study. Study risk is the risk that something goes wrong with patient safety and rights and slash or the quality or integrity of the data collected. For example, in complex oncology studies, trial sites are visited weekly, whereas in simpler studies, for example in aesthetic medicine for the removal of facial wrinkles, trial sites may be visited much less frequently because of the lower risk to the patient's safety and the lower amount of data. Of course, the frequency of patient visits also has a significant influence. If the study participants only come to the trial site, Three times a month monitoring does not have to take place every week because several patients should be checked completely at each visit. In a more complex study, with a higher visit frequency, where more data is collected per visit the number of monitoring visits, as required by GCP, should be appropriately adjusted and accordingly should be higher. The drug development phase also plays a role in planning the monitoring frequency. In Phase I studies, in which professional Phase I units participate in a monocentric study, which do nothing other than conducting studies, the monitoring frequency is kept very low because the number of study participants in these studies is still very small. These are healthy male volunteers, and the treatment period in these studies is usually quite short. In phased Raman II studies, the frequency is higher because the study designs are more complex. These are multicenter studies with a higher number of patients, which, however, are still composed very homogeneously as a study population. In phased Raman III studies, the number of patients multiplies, which is much more heterogeneous, partly multimorbid, and the number of sites is correspondingly much higher. In addition, there is a higher risk of inspection as part of a registration trial, which means that the sponsors want these trials to be monitored at a higher frequency. In medical device studies, monitoring depends very much on the risk class of the product. Class Roman III devices, or actively implantable medical devices, should generally be monitored in a manner similar to drug trials, or even more frequently if the devices are very complex to use. Another possibility to monitor a study is risk-based monitoring. This is a modern way to adapt monitoring activities to the risk involved in a study without compromising data quality and compliance with patient rights and safety. In low-risk product development, for example, it is possible to switch more to central remote monitoring, which saves costs and resources indirectly. However, it's not about corporate risks such as excessive costs and delayed approval, but about quality risk management, risks related to patient safety and rights or the quality and integrity of data. However, even if trial sites recruit much less than expected, it is advisable to visit the site to find out the reasons for poor recruitment. If it is due to the fact that the inclusion and exclusion criteria were misunderstood, then it can be explained again. If there is a lack of personnel, one can help to find a study nurse, and if it is found that it is due to a lack of interest in the study, one can think about closing the trial site together with the sponsor. If there is a lack of interest, it would be advisable to close the trial site to avoid the risk of inspection and errors in the handling of the study-related products. Inactive sites are also expensive, in particular if they involve only one patient instead of none, 
because this involves relatively more work, travel time, and travel costs. So much about the frequency of monitoring visits. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time, when we will speak more about the practical points of a monitoring visit. Goodbye.